In talking about the rise of China, Barack Obama has made clear he sees the potential and the problems. The emergence of an economically vibrant, more politically active China offers new opportunities for prosperity and cooperation, but it also poses new challenges for the United States and our partners in the region. One of those challenges is the economy, which Obama has emphasized as he's campaigned in swing states in the industrial heartland hit by tough times and crucial to his electoral hopes. We finally need to confront the issue of trade with China. All too often, China's been competing in a way that's tilting the playing field and is unfair to U.S. workers. It's not just that China is following the path taken by so many other countries before it and dumping goods into our market while not opening our own mar their own markets, something that I've spoken out against. It's not just that they're violating intellectual property rights. They're also grossly undervaluing their currency and giving their goods yet another unfair advantage. In his epic primary battle against Hillary Clinton, who was even harsher on China, Obama had little choice but to go after Beijing. As president, I'll use all the diplomatic avenues open to me to insist that China stop manipulating its currency. Because the campaign, however, insists he remains committed to free trade. Brookings Institution scholar Jeffrey Bader is Obama's top China advisor. So basically what he's talking about is a China that plays by the rules, is a good partner for the United States and the China doesn't, isn't. And we're going to uh, try to facilitate uh, trade and investment flows with a China that plays by the rules and try to block it when it doesn't. His aides characterize Obama's views on China as in the mainstream of past American presidents. While the Obama campaign has sought to craft a cautious and pragmatic approach toward China, the senator is under pressure from within his own party, especially from Congress, to take a tougher line, particularly on trade. One of Obama's China advisors is University of Michigan sinologist uh, broadly, Kenneth Lieberthal. Uh, if Barack Obama is elected president, uh, and if there are substantial Democratic majorities in both the House and Senate, he may have trouble with his own party on a lot of issues. Trade is one issue. Another is human rights, where the Democrats have traditionally been more vocal. But here, Obama says the Bush administration's own policies, Iraq, Guantanamo Bay, domestic surveillance, have undermined the U.S. ability to pressure Beijing. I think that Senator Obama believes that on human rights, we've done enormous damage to ourselves in the last eight years. The most important thing we can do to try to encourage the forces of democracy and protection of human rights in China uh, is not so much preached to them as uh, you know, physician heal thyself um, uh, to show the world that we once again uh, walk the walk as well as talking the talk on the subject of democracy. Putting America's own house in order is a key Obama theme on another China issue. Beijing's huge holdings of U.S. Treasury bonds. We've got to get our own fiscal house in order. Uh, our leverage is weakening when we run up enormous deficits, funding a war that uh, should have never been authorized, and we then are taking out the credit card with the Chinese. That gives us less leverage. Like McCain, Obama supports the thaw between Taiwan and China while remaining mindful of Beijing's military buildup. And he favors strengthening Washington's alliances with South Korea and Japan but not simply as a hedge against China. That's why, although Obama has not spoken publicly about McCain's idea of a League of Democracies, China specialists advising the Illinois senator are skeptical of McCain's proposal. I think it is uh, certainly something that the Chinese uh, pay attention to uh, if he is really serious, which is to say if he really thinks of policy toward Asia in terms of linking up with the democratic states of Asia uh, against uh, the other states in Asia, uh, then I think the Chinese will pick up on that very fast, uh, and they certainly will see it as an attempt to encircle them and to constrain their rise. This highlights an important difference in emphasis between the two candidates. While McCain looks at China more in traditional balance of power terms, Obama stresses areas of possible cooperation in confronting new global threats. As president, I intend to forge a more effective regional framework in Asia that will promote stability, prosperity, and help us confront common transnational threats such as tracking down terrorists and responding to global health problems like avian flu. 
His advisors say that's especially true on the issue of global warming. The U.S. and China are number one and number two in carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, there's going to have to be a successor regime negotiated to Kyoto sometime next year. Uh, and if the United States and China can come to a common understanding, such an agreement would be possible. And if they cannot, it will not. For both candidates, it would be a daunting array of issues, even without the more immediate challenges of Iraq, Afghanistan, and a slumping economy. And the stakes are enormous. Will China be a partner, a competitor, or an adversary? Right now, the fact is there's simply no way to be sure. What is certain, though, is that the policies adopted by the next occupant of the White House will play a central role in answering a question crucial to the future of the entire world. I'm Mike Chinoy. Thanks for watching.